So what are the do's and don'ts of vaccination or the rules? Never vaccinate a sick bird. If you vaccinate a sick bird, it could end up dying. You could end up accelerating a disease and the vaccines may fail to work. And this becomes a loss for you. It is important to vaccinate when temperatures are low, early morning or late evening. Withdraw any antibiotics three days before and after vaccination. This way, you are able to condition the body of the birds to be ready for the vaccination process. Buy your own vaccines and ensure it is not expired and handled properly. We have looked at how to handle vaccines. Maintaining a cold chain is important. And maybe you yourself being able to go and purchase the vaccines and going through the whole process of maintaining the cold chain is important so that the vaccines do not lose their potency. Consider using anti-stress to help relax your birds during vaccination time. Ensure all of the medicated water is consumed and removed after three hours. Vaccines can become toxic if left in the water for over three hours. To ensure that your birds effectively consume the water with the vaccine, you can withdraw water for one and, and one or one and a half hours and give dry feeds to your bird so that when you introduce the vaccine water, they will effectively be able to consume the same. Do not use chlorinated water for vaccination because chlorine will affect the, the effectiveness of vaccine working. It is also important to use clean water. If it's water that you cannot drink, then you should not be using it for your birds. I'm going to take you through a simple sample vaccination schedule that can be used to vaccinate your birds even at home. We're going to look at the age, the vaccine, and route of administration. So what vaccine is given on day one? We have Marex, and this one is given through an injection. We also have Newcastle and infectious bronchitis, and this one is either given through the eye or nasotrop. These two vaccines are mostly done at the hatcheries for commercial purposes. It may be difficult to do this at home, especially when you have very few birds that you need to vaccinate. On day eight, we have Gumboro, and we give the vaccine through drinking water. Day 10, we give Newcastle and infectious bronchitis again. We're also going to give through the eye or niso drops. Day 16, we have Gumboro, and we're still giving through drinking water. Day 24, we have Newcastle and infect infectious bronchitis again. And this time, we are going to, are going to give through the eye, the nasal drops, or drinking water. Please notice that we have introduced a new route of administration, the drinking water. Week 6, we are going to still give Newcastle and infectious bronchitis again. We are, we are going to give through either the eye, the nasal drops, or drinking water. The same week six, we're going to give full typhoid, and this is usually an injection. Week eight, we're going to give fall pox. Again, this is an injection as well. Week 16, we are going to vaccinate against Newcastle. Notice, not Newcastle and infectious bronchitis, Newcastle plain, and we're going, going to give through spray or drinking water. It is also important to note that Newcastle should be given every three months. Every three months, repeat Newcastle vaccine. Why? Because we want to make sure that the disease is kept at bay and not affecting our birds. We are also going to do a routine deworming every three months, and the dewormer is going to be given in drinking water. It is important to consult your animal health professional or your vet doctor, or even the local government where the veterinary doctors are found, to make sure you are getting the updates of what is happening on the ground in terms of vaccination schedules, any disease outbreaks, and as well as for them to come assist you with the vaccination itself. This, especially the injections, and even 
the administration processes should be done or guided by a professional who knows how to do this so that you're able to effectively vaccinate your birds. Now that we understand what is a vaccine and why we need to vaccinate and how we need to handle vaccines, then when and how do we vaccinate? The when. When you purchase your day-old chicks from the hatchery, they will give you a recommended schedule for vaccination. It is important you keep the vaccination schedule and vaccinate your birds as recommended. The how, we are going to look at the different routes of vaccination in poultry and this will help you be able to administer vaccination properly or effectively in your flock. Drinking water. This involves administering the vaccine in drinking water. It is usually the most preferred method because of its ease in doing it. It doesn't require much labor. And to encourage water intake when using this method of vaccination, it is important to withdraw water for an hour or so before the intended vaccine is given. This way, you are assured of all the birds drinking the vaccinated water when it is given as they will be getting dusty already. Aerosol vaccination. This involves spraying the vaccine in the air. It, this one is mostly preferred for large flock size as well as due to its ease in administration. Ocular or nasal root. This is probably the most effective route of vaccination though it requires a lot of labor. Why we, how are we saying it could be one of the most effective routes? Because each bird is attended to individually, giving it a better chance of assured vaccination. On ocular, the vaccine is given through the bird's eye by dropping in a droplet. And the same goes for the nasal through the nostril, where we give a drop, as shown on the diagrams. Intramuscular, this one involves using a hypodermic needle to introduce the vaccine to the breast muscle of the bud as shown in our diagram. Subcutaneous, in this method, the vaccine is injected under the skin, usually at the back of the neck. With some of these roots of vaccination, like intramuscular, subcutaneous, and ocular, it would be important to ensure that you consult your veterinary doctor or veterinary technician to work with you where this is concerned. Let the experts do the job so that we acquire the effectiveness of the vaccination process.